Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech number 277, doing a video over the banned and restricted updates from April 2016. These updates just came out today. I'm super excited about them. The end of the Eldrazi Plague and the return of Blue Control. Modern's going to be crazy here coming up. We've got three changes on the list. Eye of Ugin is gone. Sword of the Meek, which I predicted in an earlier video, has come back to Modern. In fact, it was never actually in Modern. It was one of the early banned cards. I don't think it's going to be overpowered, but it's going to be very good. And Ancestral Visions. Okay, I got this one wrong. Ancestral Visions was on my buy list, but because it's a nuts card in Legacy, is now legal in Modern. Yes, Ancestral Visions, the closest thing we've got in Modern to an Ancestral Recall, is legal. This card is crazy good, and it really enables a whole nother archetype that we haven't seen before. Let's go through these one by one. Eye of Ugin's gone, but as important that Eye of Ugin's gone is that the Temple is not gone, Mox Opal is not gone, and Cranio Plating are not gone. Eye of Ugin clearly was targeting the Eldrazi plague that we've been going through. Eldrazi are nuts, and the Eye had the most explosive starts that nobody could deal with. Does this mean the death of the Eldrazi deck in Modern? Hell no! Eldrazi Temple is still an extremely good card. Eldrazi are still going to be very strong. I predict they'll be a tier 1 deck, just based off of the Temple, but they won't be a deck you can't interact with anymore. They won't be a deck that is so fast occasionally that you just get blown off the table. But Robots is still a deck that unless you dedicate a bunch of sideboard spots and draw those sideboard cards, will just blow you off the table. I was a little surprised not to see either Mox Opal or Cranial Plating on this ban list. That is the tier one deck to prepare for, and it's really gonna eat your sideboard spots. In fact, if you can find a way to put anti-robot hate into your main deck, do it. Robots are really strong right now, or affinity as other people call them. Ancestral Visions, I've played for a long time with Shardless Agent. This card is wonderful, but Shardless Agent is an eternal card that is not in modern. So we're gonna see very different decks built around Ancestral Visions. In some matchups though, the best first turn play with an Ancestral Visions in Legacy was not to hold it, it was just to play it, and then control the board for the next few turns and refill your hand when the Force Suspend counter came off. I'm not sure where to start when looking to brew with Ancestral Visions. Gary Thompson did a wonderful article back in 2011 that looked at putting Ancestral Visions into Legacy. But unfortunately, most of the cards that this deck is built around are not currently legal. Yes, Repeal is legal in Spell Snare, and we've got Path to Exile. Sword of Feast and Famine is great, and Vendillion Click is very strong. But what do you replace Jace the Mind Sculptor and Stoneforge Mystic with? How do you deal with aggro decks that are super fast without that Batter Skull package? This is where I'm starting to brew a control deck for Ancestral Visions. But there's a lot of cards that need to be taken out, and we need another set of win conditions than that Stoneforge or Jace package to make that happen in Modern. Modern now has two really strong first turn drops. In blue, suspending an Ancestral Vision is going to be amazing. Serum Visions helps you, especially if you're a combo deck. There are some decks that will play both of these together. One of the important things about Ancestral Vision, though, is that it's not a one caster. It's a zero caster. So as your Chalice of the Void continues to be popular, chances are that someone is not going to be putting Chalice out on zero. Or if they do, it's going to be the second or third turn after you have suspended a Visions. Chalice of the Void is still going to continue to be a powerhouse in Modern. The card that is going to spawn a whole new archetype, though, is Sword of the Meek. When combined with Thopter Foundry, you can gain a large amount of life. Have a blocker whenever you need it, and do crazy things in the game. When brewing specifically for Modern, I would look at Chris Anderson's amazing legacy deck 
that was built around Dig Through Time and Sword of the Meek with Thopter Foundry. What I really like about this particular deck is the use of the Thought Scours. Sword of the Meek doesn't need to be in your hand, it can be in the graveyard to work extremely well. Snapcaster is already an all-star. We've got some solid control cards here already. Replacing Force of Wills in Modern is a little bit difficult, although having cards like Spell Pierce early on and then hard counters at a higher casting cost is definitely doable. How do you deal with Dig Through Time? Maybe Ancestral Visions fits into that particular spot. The casting cost is different. I don't know. I'm going to be brewing with it, but I'm sure there'll be a Sword of the Meek Thopter Foundry deck that is very solid and is not broken. If you want to look at these decks that I just talked about and get some more ideas for brewing, I would definitely check out the video that Chris Anderson did on that Legacy deck, and then go back to Bill Stark's extended 2010 deck tech with Thopter Sword. It really looks at what was going on in Legacy at the time, but it's a great place to start to find the best use of Thopter Sword in Modern. Everybody knows that the cards that are unbanned are shooting through the roof, but your opportunity right now is to pick up the cards. Some of these, unfortunately, have sold out in the last few hours. Some of them still haven't really shot up the way that I think they should, that work with those cards really well. Thought Scour is really easy to pick up. The foils seem to be sold out most places, although I would clearly pick up the foils at that eight to $12 range. The non-foils though, I'd make sure that I had a play set or two of them for brewing. Snapcaster Mage also is incredible in decks where Thought Scour is being played and Thopter Sword is one of those decks. Tezzeret is a card that I have really enjoyed for a long period of time that just hasn't found a home in modern. Combining it with Thopter Foundry and Sword in some way may be its chance to break into tier one modern. And Jace VP is not going to be going down anytime soon. You can discard your sword early on and make the combo work later. In Vintage, we see Lodestone Golem getting the axe. Will this kill Mishra Workshop decks? No but it will put them on a little more of a fair playing field. Although, at this point in Vintage, we have something really interesting. We have Lodestone Golem, Chalice of the Void, and Trinisphere, which are all restricted. Each one of these is extremely powerful to get out early on. Being able to play these along with maybe a Strip Mine combo that works with a Crucible of Worlds gives the Mishra's Workshop deck, several different win conditions. Now, I know that Lodestone Golem is obviously better with multiples out in play, but you still have other taxing effects like Thorn of Amethyst that will see play. Something else to note, though, about these three cards is none of them are restricted in Legacy. You can play four Lodestone Golems, four Chalice of the Void to shut down your opponent's Brainstorms, and four Trinispheres. Trinisphere is a crazy card. It shuts down Storm. It shuts down Cantrip decks. Small creature decks have a serious problem with it. I would be brewing with these restricted cards in Legacy. Mud is a powerful deck that I believe just hasn't been optimized correctly for Legacy. With regards to Vintage, though, we also didn't see Gush get banned. I think this is, or restricted, this is the most powerful card draw engine right now that is unrestricted in Vintage. If you want to play a very powerful deck right now, I would look towards those Gush decks, but not be surprised if six months from now or a year from now, Gush joins the other cards on the restricted list. To peer into the future of Magic's finance and strategy, subscribe to the channel, I'm doing a lot of videos this month. Thank you everybody for the warm wishes around my birthday this last weekend. I had a great time. If you would like to help us make more videos, please become a patron of the channel. I greatly appreciate everybody who's out there supporting the channel. Until next time, choose the cards wisely.